Hey guys, welcome to today's video. So, I'm not gonna lie, I did film this video about two hours ago. My battery died halfway through, so I decided I was gonna go for a cycle. Um, now, that was a stupid idea, because I am so hot right now, and I feel like I just look so bad. But, anyway, as you've seen, the title of today's video is How to Feed a Snake. Now, I want to preface before this video starts, I am not claiming I know everything, I'm not claiming if you do not feed your snake the same way I do, you are doing it wrong, no, not at all. For your peace of mind, I work at a reptile rescue um, where I have volunteered for two years now. Um, I now actually work there, I got a job there recently, um, it was actually like two months ago now which is just crazy. Um, but yeah, and also I have a qualification in animal management, that was my phone, I'm apologising. <laughs> not saying I'm right, I'm wrong, I'm just saying that these ways work for me and my snakes. Now, about 99.9% .9 of my animals are rescues, um, meaning they can be a bit fussier, they can have some problems, for example one of my rural pythons does have a little bit of a wobble, um, but yeah. I thought I'd show you what I do, share some knowledge and see if this can help you and your snakes out at home if they haven't been eating or if you want to just learn a bit more. So today we're going to be focusing on four species of snakes. That is the western hog nose, a royal python or if you're from America the bull python, uh, a corn snake and a Burmese python. Now I chose these species because these are the snakes that are most common I find in the pet trade and a lot of people seem to have these at the moment as well as the fact that these are the species that people have come to the rescue where I work or the pet shop where I used to work or to me on Instagram saying like I have a problem with this species, can you help me out? Now, I'm just going to go through today how I feed each species and you can take away the information you want to know because I'm not going into too much detail about things I don't do and I'm also not going into detail about supplementing and UV lighting which is a video I do really want to do because as you can see I give my snakes UV but that's not what we're talking about today. So let's start with Marigold, my corn snake. It is, like I said, an melanistic corn snake. Now, that just is her coloration, basically, she's an albino. Um, but what I find is common with a melanistic corn snake is that they get big, like, and I mean big. <laughs> I um, don't know 100% all the sexes of my snakes because I don't find probing necessary unless you're breeding or it's for a valid reason basically. I'm not saying I'm against it, I just don't have a valid reason myself to probe any of my snakes. Um, if you don't know what probing is, probing is how we tell the gender of a snake unless you see evidence <laughs> otherwise. So yeah, Marigold is a very big girl so she's on jumbo mice. She was on large mice for the last two years I've had her. Um, and she just gobbles them up so today I've decided to upsize her so that's what you're going to see me feeding her today. Yes, so Marigold's going to get a jumbo mouse. Now my two royal pythons, the reason I'm feeding both royal pythons is because one is from a pet shop and one is a rescue. Now res the rescued uh, royal python who is called Pumpkin, he does have a bit of a wobble. He hasn't wobbled in months I will say because we give him UV, we supplement his food occasionally and he's doing really well but when we first got him if you had him out for longer than five minutes he would start wobbling like this um, and if he miss his if he like miss struck the food he started wobbling and started struggling so when we first got him there was a lot of drop feeds <clears throat> and then he started taking and then now he does smash it fingers crossed he's probably not gonna eat now no he should he should eat um, so yeah so with Pumpkin and Nyoka, they're the same snake, but they can be different feeders, which is why I wanted to show you both of them in this video. Um, now, both of them are on the same food, and they are on large wiener rats. Now, this is just a bit smaller than a small rat, if anyone is confused. And then the third species we're going to be feeding is Stewie, my western hog nose. Now, Stewie, we don't know if he's a he or she, but he is still growing. So, he was on small mice for, I'd say, nine months um, and then now he's on medium mice today. Um, now with Stewie and Marigold, the corn snake and the hog nose, they are both colubrids meaning we feed them mice. The reason we do this is because they have a faster metabolism so you can feed them smaller or less fattier meals more often 
than opposed to a royal python when they get full size you want to feed them every 10 to 14 days and a bigger or fattier meal. Stewie's going to be having a medium mouse. Now the difference with Stewie's feed is he actually gets fed outside of the enclosure. The reason for this is because he has a sand soil mix substrate. Um, yeah so the reason we feed Stewie outside of the enclosure is because he's on loose substrate and we do not want him to ingest that whilst feeding. It's a sand soil mix which will stick to the mouse. Um, now I would like to say in the wild snakes do ingest substrate, uh, substrate, the earth. Uh, if they're in the desert, <clears throat> if they're in the desert they will ingest sand, if they're in a jungle they'll ingest soil. It is natural but the difference is in the wild there are minerals and vitamins that benefit the snake as opposed to in captivity where they're just going to be eating some eco earth or some sand or aspen. We'll talk about aspen in another video guys. <laughs> but <clears throat> yeah so we feed him outside of the enclosure and this is what I feed him in. He's a very small snake um, so if you're from the UK you know how amazing these tops are. Um, now it's not that sealed so it's not something I leave him in. Um, we do stay in the room whilst he's eating and it does have air holes. I don't know if you can see the holes I've made like here um, and here but yeah so he gets fed in this which you will see oh I just kicked the camera sorry I kicked you guys but yeah so you'll see when we feed him that we get him out and we feed him in this we find that the dark is better for him but you can use a more opaque box um, <clears throat> I did actually used to feed marigold outside of the enclosure but that is for a whole another reason another video um but she was fed in an opaque box and that was no problem but stewie it's we don't feed him outside of the enclosure because of a feeding problem or because of a behavioral problem it's simply we don't want him eating his substrate so we do this and it works for him yes you shouldn't handle snakes before and after feeding but we are very careful and we do support his body weight when we put him away so it's fine and Finally, the fourth species, I thought we'd do something big. We could have done the retick, but I'm like, no, let's go big or let's go home. So Betsy, my baby girl, who's my biggest girl, <laughs> um, she's getting fed today. Now Betsy gets fed every three to four weeks. She's a growing bum, so she does get fed um, a variety and food that's gonna encourage growth, not force feeding. We're not power feeding. We don't do that here, no. Um, we feed her the right amount she needs in order to grow. Um, she's a female Burmese python and she's currently 12 foot long if anyone's interested. But yeah, she gets fed a variety of rats, guinea pigs or rabbits. I know, I know, you must all hate me. I used to have pet rabbits, I promise, like I, I'm not evil. Um, but it's really good for her to have a diet. Now with snakes like royals and corns you must thinking, should I give them a varied diet now? you can you don't have to that's that's a video for a whole another day but with Betsy I don't want to feed her guinea pigs every week because they're quite fatty and I don't want to feed her rabbits every week because they're too lean so mixing it up sometimes is just a bit better for her um, and what we feed her depends on how often we feed her so say we fed her a rabbit we feed her within two to three weeks if it's a guinea pig or rat it's like three to four weeks because they are so much fattier so when it comes to what equipment you're going to use when you're feeding a snake or corn snake or anything, you have these options. Now with most of the snakes we're feeding today, you could probably use the smaller ones. However, if you are uncomfortable with feeding your snake, and it's no shame if you are, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of practice get some bigger tongs. Now these bad boys are for uh, Betsy's enclosure. I think these are, yeah, these are about two foot, um, these tongs. Now this is for Betsy, my Burmese python, as well as the monitor lizards. However, Fred does like to use these ones to feed the monitor lizards. But if you are nervous, get, just get some length bit in between you. Because you must remember when you're feeding with smaller tongs, the rat is here, but your hand is here, meaning it is easy for the snake to mistake which heat source they're going after, because although it's very close for the snake to misjudge where the food is and tag you. Um, with that being said, you can use smaller tongs. I These are my favourite tongs. 
quickly show you them. Um, now, the reason I like these is just because they pinch very well. However, they're not very great when it comes to feeding snakes and lizards that are very feisty because they will bite the the actual tongs. I think there's a clip somewhere on our, on this YouTube channel of an animal clinging on to the tongs. Um, but yeah, so I like to use these ones which have this little plastic covering and these ones are actually from uh, Exoterra, I believe. I don't know if you can see that. But um, they did, it did have two like plasticky guards, but Pablo, our Colombian golden tegu, um, I was feeding him and he pulled it off. He didn't swallow it, but yeah, he pulled it off. So I need to get some more safety ones. I just think these are a lot safer for our animals. Lucifer here, my king snake, he has grabbed onto the tongs. Bucky, my Aki monitor, he grabs onto the tongs. Even Hulk, my crested gecko, grabs onto the tongs. So it's just, it's always good to be safe. Um, now, uh, one thing I will say with burns, which you're going to see again in the end of this video, is when you feed them, you want to be more cautious that you're not really around the enclosure. Sometimes putting a towel or a blanket over the front of the enclosure so she can't see you will help because berms are opti op optimistic, is that the word? I'm just not going to use it. Um, so berms are, are great feeders and they can be sometimes quite greedy. So if you have the smell of a rat but then they see you, which is going to be a much bigger heat source than the rat, they're going to be like, oh, that's a bigger meal. <laughs> Mind if I do. Now, I am not saying berms and retics eat people. No, 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 I'm not saying that. Um, I'm just saying if they can smell food and they see you as a bigger heat source, they might lean towards striking towards you. So just be safe and make sure the food you're offering to them is nice and warm. Bye. So now we're gonna get on to how do we defrost food? Now, I'm not gonna lie. I have heard horror stories. Really bad stories. Horror stories. I've heard crazy stories. I've heard people putting them in the microwave. I've heard people leaving them on radiators. I've heard people boiling them. I just... No. No. If I asked you to defrost a turkey, you would put it on the side and leave it, or you would put it in some water and leave it. That's how you defrost snake food, people! I just, I know I sound like I'm crazy right now, but so many people don't seem to know how to defrost snake food, and I'm just, I just want everyone's pets to be safe. How we do it is we get this big bucket, we fill it up with really, really hot water, but not boiling, just really hot water, I'd say to about here, and then before we feed, we either reheat the water, or we get like a cup or a jug that isn't dirty. I'd say for 30 seconds in the cup, and then you offer it to your snake, so it's nice, fresh, and warm, because again, you're the bigger heat source, but you need the food to be more appetizing. They use their heat pits more than their eyes when it comes to feeding, remember that. Okay, so I think I've rambled on enough. Let's get defrosting this food. Let's get feeding. Let's get on with it, because everyone's sick and tired of me. This is your warning. Dead animals are about to be put into this bucket. I'm warning you now. It's actually really gross. Um, that's Betsy's food. I'm covering the eye because it's really nasty. Um, but yeah, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna blur this because it's actually kind of gross, the, the rabbit. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start feeding the snakes. He's very angry, so we're just gonna pop the lid on him for a while just to get him a little less pissed, and then we will feed him in a bit. So um, we've got a jug full of really hot water, and we're just gonna grab the animals that we're feeding and pop it in here, and then go from there. Okay, so this is really warm water to get it nice and hot. And then we've got this container to pop them in so the wet rat doesn't get on the floor. And then we're gonna start with marigold. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. He's, I believe he's under there. So. Oh, someone's been shedding. So this is what I was talking about earlier guys, about the wobble. I kind of jinxed him, I did say, and watch him miss. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is what I mean by drop feeding. We are still going to probably try, but if he doesn't take, okay, we will okay, just leave okay. it there. Yeah, this is what you want, bud. Come on. Put it nice and close for you. Patience is key, guys. <laughs> so, yeah. All good. It doesn't drop it when I put the log down on him. Yeah, so Fred just put that rock there because he knows if that log touches him, he's probably going to let go. So, <laughs> just very gently close the conclusion. <laughs> so last up in the snake room is Stewie. We kind of leave him last to chill for a bit and get a bit hungry from the smell. And then yeah, Stewie's turn. So again, heating the little mouse up, drying it off quickly, and then grabbing it from the butt end, but you're grabbing the belly. There you go. I wonder if he's gonna take. Nice. He's chewing his, just trying to chew his venom in there. <laughs> yeah, so Stewie being a rear fang venom. Uh, venomous, sorry, snake. Uh, they have to chew the venom into their prey as opposed to just, you know, swallowing it straight away like constrictors do. It's quite fun to watch, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Readjusting her jaw. Oh, I thought I was gonna get a yawn. Go on, yawn. I think she's got it. Oh, no, maybe. Yeah, here you go. There's yeah. the yawn. <laughs> get that jaw back in line. No, but calling it for ages, usually she eats it straight away. So I've just noticed that Nyoka has dropped her food. I feel like I jinxed the pythons today, <laughs> but, um,. We'll see, she might just be smelling the rabbit that we defrosted in the bucket with the rats and is being getting a bit confused. Um, that could easily happen, royals are quite picky with smell, so I'm gonna let you know later on if she re-picks it up, or she might do it now. So we think Squee's all done, so we're gonna pop him back. This is just Fred, my fabulous assistant. Hello. Yeah, and there snake. it is. You can see the lump. Now he got a bigger meal today, so a much bigger lump. But yeah, we just have to be really careful with 
um, his tummy because it's a much bigger male this time. Well, not that much bigger, but he's never had a medium mouse before. And there's Stewie. <laughs> to be Patsy. Um, so it's kind of the same methods as before. Okay, and I really hope you enjoyed that video, guys. I have three seconds to do an outro, so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below on a video I want to see next week, and thank you guys for watching. Okay, so, what?